<laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Marilyn D'Olivera. I'm a cellist. I play with the Oregon Symphony. And um, this is my daughter, Isla. We're gonna do a little story time for you today. We are um, here in Portland, Oregon. It's a rainy gray day. And we are quarantined at home because of COVID-19. And we're really missing um, all of the all of the things that we do as orchestral musicians. I'm missing playing in the hall and sharing music, but also I'm missing so many of our community partnerships. And I'm also missing the other kinds of programs in our community that are shut down, our story times. It's a big, it's a big part of our family. I've always taken my kids to story times and um, I'm missing all of that stuff. And I thought that maybe some of you other parents that are um, currently homeschooling parents and maybe you're feeling a little bit like me, really in over your heads, that maybe you would also enjoy having a little story time at home. Um, this is a program that in the Oregon Symphony we do quite often. We go into schools and partner with librarians to present music and books together. Story times are a great way to introduce your families to a movement and music and um, reading and language. So. Yeah, we're gonna have a little bit of all of that today. We're gonna tell you a little about the cello, we're gonna um, get to read some of our favorite books that we have at home, and you're gonna get to meet my my family, except for the baby who's sleeping. But yeah, except the, the, the little baby Kylie, but right. he's never, well, But we should get started, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. We're, we thought we would start maybe with a little bit of movement, just to get our bodies moving. We've been stuck at home a lot, and let's get our bodies moving before we read a book. How does that sound? Oh, I should introduce my husband, Trevor, because he's going to help us too. He's going to be reading a lot. You want to put a hand in here? All right, so why don't we get our bodies moving by singing a song first and doing some movements with that song. I bet you all know this song. I'm going to make some room for you, okay? Okay. How about let's start with If You're Happy and You Know It. McPhail. Mole lived all alone underground. He spent his days digging tunnels. At night, he ate his supper in front of the TV and then went to bed. Mole liked his life, but lately he had begun to feel there was something missing. One night on the television, a man played the violin. He made the most beautiful music Mole had ever heard. I want 
to make beautiful music too, Mole said to himself. So the next day he sent away for a violin of his very own. Every day Mole checked his mailbox. No violin. Finally, after nearly three weeks, it arrived. Mole was so excited. He picked up the violin and drew the bow across the strings. But instead of beautiful music, all he made was a horrible screeching sound. Mole tried again. The violin still screeched, but not quite so horribly. Mole kept at it. After about a week, he could play one note, then two, and before a month went by, he could play an entire scale. continued to practice. He learned to put the notes together in a simple song. Years went by. Mole got better and better. He was happier than he'd ever been. During the day, as he dug tunnels, Mole hummed the music he would play at night. Now Mole played even better than the man he'd seen on TV so long ago. Sometimes he wondered what it would be like to play his music for people. He imagined himself playing before a huge audience. He imagined that he played for presidents and queens. He even imagined that his music could reach into people's hearts and melt away their anger and sadness. Why, maybe his music could even change the world. Mole laughed at himself. How silly I am. That my music could do all that when no one has ever heard it. Mole played one more song, then put down his violin and went to sleep and dreamed beautiful, peaceful. the world all around him. And that's the way music works. Um, you know, that's actually one of the things that made the cello become such a big part of my life is that it helped me process my feelings and it helped me, it helped fill up my life. And when you share music with other people, it does the same thing for all of them. We get to kind of feel things together and process our feelings and it's, it's been doing that, music has been doing that for centuries and centuries, and it's a pretty, pretty cool gift that we have as human beings. Um, 
I'm going to tell you all about the cello and how it works in a little bit, but I thought first I would share a little bit of music with you. Um, we've all been having lots of feelings because of coronavirus and being stuck at home and having kind of a new lifestyle for a little bit. And this is one of the pieces that I've been playing a lot. It's a piece by Johann Sebastian Bach, his suite in D minor. And um, yeah, I just thought maybe let's, let's have a moment of listening. So put your listening ears on and see how this music makes you feel. <laughs>
I know a shy fellow who swallowed a symbol. No, so he didn't swallow a symbol. He swallowed the symbol to jam with the fiddle. He swallowed the fiddle to jam with the sax. He swallowed the sax to jam with the harp. He swallowed the harp to jam with the cello. I don't know why he swallowed the cello. Perhaps he'll bellow. I know a shy fellow who swallowed a flute. That was a hoot to swallow a flute. He swallowed the flute to jam with the cymbal. He swallowed the cymbal to jam with the fiddle. He swallowed the fiddle to jam with the sax. He swallowed the sax to jam with the harp. He swallowed the harp to jam with the cello. I don't know why he swallowed the cello. Perhaps he'll bellow. I know a shy fellow who swallowed a kazoo. Strange thing to do to swallow a kazoo. He swallowed the kazoo to jam with the flute. He swallowed the flute to jam with the cymbal. He swallowed the cymbal to jam with the fiddle. He swallowed the fiddle to jam with the sax. He swallowed the sax to jam with the harp. He swallowed the harp to jam with the cello. I don't know why he swallowed the cello. Perhaps he'll bellow. I know a shy fellow who swallowed a bell. The teeniest, tiniest, petite Tessa bell. Well, this belly did wiggle, his belly did shake. It rumbled and tumbled, it quivered and quaked. It rocked and it rolled, it swiveled and it swelled, and all in account of that little tiny bell. So, he belched and he burped, he turned shades of yellow. It seemed he was doomed, that very shy fellow. He weaved and he wallowed, he stomped and he yelled. And the next thing he knew, out jingled the bell. Then, out buzzed the kazoo, out tooted the flute, out crashed the cymbal. That noisy galoot, out flashed the fiddle, out sizzled the sax, out strummed the harp, he played to the max. Well, he bellowed that fellow, that fellow did bellow. And last but not least, out cha cha the cello. instrument that was really featured in that last book, the cello, which is the instrument that I play. Um, so yeah, this is a cello, and it's part of the string family because it has four strings on it. That's what makes the sound. These strings vibrate, they wiggle back and forth, and then they ring through this big box down here that is made out of wood. See? My cello is made out of wood. Um, and yeah, and I can make those strings wiggle either by plucking them with my fingers, that's a fancy word called within staccato, or I can also um, use this thing right here, which is called a bow. And the bow is also made out of wood, but um, it also has horse hair on it. We give the horse a haircut and we string it onto the bow, the horse's hair onto the bow, and then we put this sticky stuff, kind of like sack, called rosin, so that when we pull our bow across the string, it makes the strings vibrate like that. That's kind of how the cello works. And as you can hear, in our house, the cello is a very popular instrument. Everybody here plays the cello. Actually, even our little baby is trying to play the cello. So um, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna sing you a little song because I was gonna participate. She's gonna play on her cello, and we're gonna teach you a little song that. Um, shows you all the different parts of the cello, okay? And we're gonna start off really slow so that you can learn those parts. All right?
belt we move on. Oh, actually, now that you know all about the cello and the parts of the cello, we thought we'd do one more song about the parts of the body to help you get your wiggles out. I know you were sitting down for a while to learn about the cello, so why don't we get wiggles out with one more song? Yeah? Go ahead and put your cello in there. Okay, so Isla put her, her um, cello. cello away and made some space for herself because this is a, a, a wiggling song. It's a kind of a song for you can get your wiggles out before we do our last book. Um, this song talks about all the different parts of your body. You probably know it already. Just like the last song we did talked about the different parts of the cello's body, now we're going to point to the different parts of our body and get our wiggles out. Isla, will you help me? Will you sing this song for us? All right, here we go. Oh. Barn Dance by Bill Martin and John Archambault. Full moon shining, shining big and bright, pushing back the shadows, holding back the night. Not a thing stirring, quiet as could be, just the whisper of the leaves on the cottonwood tree. in a game of hide and seek. Over in the farmhouse, all the lights were out. Farmer and his wife and kids, not a one about. All except the skinny kid with questions in his head, much too full of wonderment to spend the night in bed. He was up about and a listener. The night owl said, come a little closer, come a little closer, listen to the night, there's magic in the air. Then the skinny kid heard it, heard it faint begin, a plink, plink, plink on the wind's violin. Coming from the cornfields, sweet and soft and low. Music honeyed up by the old scarecrow. A plinkin' on the fiddle strings to tune him up just so. The scarecrow tucked the fiddle underneath his chin and fiddled out a welcome to all his kind of kin. He fiddled through the woods and the fields and all around the farm, bidding everybody come to a hoedown in the barn. Thank you. 
Out came the skinny kid, a ticket and a talking, and a hammin' and a yeehawin' and a rockin' and a sockin', and he danced his little toe through a hole in his stockin'. He leaped the apple barrel and the pumpkins in a pile. He showed him how to wagon wheel barnyard style. Now rock it to the moon and powder puff your noses and hurry home to mama on your little pink toes. Five times, ten times, fifteen, twenty. Now spin once again, and that's a play. But the fat little pigs whirled round and round till they got so dizzy that they all fell down. The sky was warm enough for the coming of the day when the skinny kid heard the night owl say, Morning's coming closer, morning's coming closer. The magic time is over. Night'll soon be gone. The old dog stretched and blinked a sleepy eye. Just a blink too late to see the skinny kid slip by. He tiptoed through the kitchen and tiptoed up the stairs as quiet as a feather on a breath of air. He hummed a little do si -do and flopped himself in bed with the wonders of the barn dance and dancing. concert hall and playing with my friends in the Oregon Symphony very soon and to seeing our many wonderful librarians, Miss Susan, Miss Amy, Tasha, we miss you guys very much here in our family and I can't wait to do more story times with all of you. Um, but in the meantime, if you feel like supporting the Oregon Symphony, just go to orsymphony.org and donate to support us during this really difficult time for the arts across the entire country. But thanks for being with us today. I'm gonna end with a little dance since our last book was all about a barn dance. This is a different kind of dance. It's a dance by a composer called Gaspar Casada. It's a sardaya. <laughs> 